teaching you something, necessarily. Handstand. Handstand, really? Yeah, something like that, yeah? It's <laughs> my hand, actually. So, uh, how many of you were here last year for this? No, many of you, that's right, right on. So you kind of remember what we did, except this time, my message is mostly for the ladies. I'm still gonna talk about the guys who dance in Milongas, and I'd like to tease them a little bit, being, you know, my own kind, I hope they don't mind me teasing. Uh, but the message is going to go to the ladies. How tango started to be a popular dance in the United States. This is about 15, 20 years ago, maybe a little longer. The coolest man dancing in Milongas was the man who had the best footwork. What happened to us in the last 15 years, differently, we learned how to dance tango by actually dancing. And we got to find some other important things, but steps and figures and patterns, right? We could find something beyond that. What could that be? Musicality. Musicality. Connection. Connection and the embrace and all that, right? So slowly and surely, the, the, the evolution of that man will change a little bit. And today, the coolest man that's in Milongas is the guy who um, has the greatest embrace, who makes the woman, the woman feel so comfortable and good. Who makes the woman go like, mm. oh, so nice. <laughs> but I'd like to demonstrate, if you can help me out, maybe three types of men we got to observe during our travels. And these guys uh, are using their embrace in a way that you can get to know them. You know, while you're sitting there, this is the message to the ladies, while you're sitting and watching the dances, the guy's left hand can tell you so much about who he is, what he has in mind. That you can prepare yourself before you say yes. <laughs> so, type one, uh, we call this guy thumb up hand guy. <laughs> Many of us are actually dancing like this. And that thumb up is in a way, these guys are usually very musical dancers, as this finger is like an antenna. <laughs> <laughs> it receives the music from the speakers and then you know, it can bring the music into the embrace. Uh, of course, if the Milonga place is very crowded, perhaps like tonight, that hand goes high up for a better reception. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, it's a nice gesture because it also provides some kind of feedback, some kind of feedback to his partner or to other people about her, as she is fine. <laughs> <laughs> you can see many of the times the right hand might be doing the same thing. Thumbs <laughs> up. <laughs> Type two, we call this guy table top hand guy. <laughs> this hand usually stays like this. And this is obviously providing a really comfortable place for the lady to rest her hands gently. And it's the, perhaps the, the least abusive, the least uh, aggressive hand gesture the man can have. And yet the other hand, the other arm, the right arm could have a similar feeling of let me show that by itself, as a feeling of there's something just standing here. It's like a beautiful, colorful, gorgeous bird standing on his arm, gloriously. <laughs> by the way, this is the same guy who used those handkerchiefs. You've seen some of the guys, they put their hands with the handkerchiefs so that she has a beautiful, soft, silky, gentle surface to touch. Better than cold and sweaty hands of his. Of course, not every, not every woman knows where that uh, handkerchief is going at other times. That brings us to the type three. Type three. We call him the gun hand. <laughs> <laughs> this guy has his uh, index finger and his thumb is a little bit stiff. 
Perhaps not for a bad intention or anything. <laughs> or, or, or maybe it is. <laughs> you may see his uh, hand sometimes pointing at his partner. Leo, Leo, Leo! Or if he doesn't cross, he kind of talks with the gun. Ruff, ruff, ruff. You have missed it again. <laughs> Sometimes that hand could also point towards the leader in front to say, Keep going. <laughs> to the back. Keep going. Uh -huh. These guys are happen to be usually Turkish, like myself. <laughs> I don't mind uh, teasing my own kind again. And uh, sometimes Italians, to be more precise, Sicilians. <laughs> and of course, Russian. <laughs> and we tend to actually hang out with our own kind of people after we dance at the Milonga places and we kind of send out messages with our eyes, territorial eyes. This is my place, this is my woman. What are you looking at? Look away. <laughs> Those are the guys. Well, thank you, Michelle. Have a seat. Good night, too. Well, when we come back to the evolution of the man who dances in Milongas, the coolest man dancing tango in Milongas, who is that guy? We also realize it's not only about the connection that we have with our partners, it's not the connection that we have with the music, musicality you call it. There's also something else going on nowadays, these years, we have to say. There's a connection to the other dances. We go to the Milonga, we choose a lady that would like to dance, lead, let's say, but then the good dancers, also choose another guy to follow behind so that he can have a safe space always opening up for him. In order to dance successfully and safely with your partner, you're a little bit dependent on, dependent on the guy in front of you, don't you think? The cool guys and the good guys, hopefully tonight, we all, are going to make sure that we keep up with somebody that we admire, which brings me to the, again, evolution of the coolest man dancing in Milonga. The coolest man today dancing in Milonga is the guy who inspires other men to want to dance behind him. This is a, a good situation for both of them because it also provides some level of uh, pressure for the leader on front, as if somebody is behind me. I gotta make sure that I give them enough space and I don't bump into them. And you can do the same thing as the men behind, you kind of make the leader in front of you feel that you are there and kind of breathe on his neck behind. Shall we do this tonight? Yeah. Shall we? Yeah. Thank you very much for listening.